Welcome to Linux in the Shell episode 29, AB, or Apache Benchmarking Tool. My name is Dan Washko. I'll be your host today. As always, I'd like to thank Hacker Public Radio for hosting the website, the audio files. If you have not already checked out the website or listened to the audio file, I suggest you do so because this is merely the example of using the command. Finally, I'd like to say or suggest that you contribute to Hacker Public Radio by doing your own episode on anything your geeky heart desires. <clears throat> Alright, let's talk about Apache benchmarking. Uh, as I, I discussed in the in the uh, write-up, all you really need with Apache benchmark is the Apache benchmark and the website you are going to test against and a file. So I'm going to do it against my index.php. And you'll notice right there, there's not a lot of information. Well, there is a significant amount, but it really doesn't do much because uh, Realistically speaking, we're only hitting it with one site or one request to the that one site. So uh, you got your basic information. It's Apache 2224 there, uh, port 80. Um, it's hitting index.php. 245 bytes were returned and concurrency level and all sorts uh, right there. It's not really a lot of information. Um, let me, uh, oh, that's a terrible, terrible, terrible. Switch to the right profile there. Uh, I should have popped this open beforehand. So if I if I run top right now on this site, you see that uh, load is not very too high, not very high on there. So what I would want to do is specify something like a thousand requests with a concurrency of 100 requests at a time. Send it to HTTP the Linux link dot net uh, index dot php and Wow, that that really rocked. Uh, what did I do wrong here? That should not have been returning. Let me put that in there. There we go. Um, you see that it's doing something there. It's giving a little bit of a better load on the website there. You can see uh, with that hundred requests, it's uh, really taxing out the website. Uh, and saying, whoa, that's going way high. And I actually chose that to do a, a high taxing there to <clears throat> to really go. Uh, and you'll see that as we look at the results here, you notice that it was doing uh, in iterations of 100 requests finished. Uh, same information, concurrency level of 100. Time took was 16 seconds. It completed 1,000 requests. There were no errors. It shows you all the information that was transferred. Requests per second. Uh, it was doing 60 second, 60 requests per second. Time per request was approximately a little over one and a half seconds. Uh, time per request, a uh, mean time was 16.600 milliseconds. Uh, transfer rate there per uh, kilobytes per second, and some uh, the general information going on. So uh, it shows you here. A breakdown of percentages of serve within a certain time. So 100% were served within three three seconds, uh, 3,005 milliseconds. Whereas over half of over more than half of the requests were served within 1,661 milliseconds. So less than a minute and a half. Well, about a minute and a half it took to receive process about half of those requests. Uh, we can get better output here, or different output. Uh, we can we can do different testing. Uh, let's go with keep alive and see whether that makes a big difference. So we're doing the keep alive, and we'll see uh, load is not spi what's spiking about is equal. So we're getting we're about halfway through. So. Now our results with keep alive, um, you see that a little bit lower in the test. Now we can't really say that there was much of a difference in results um, because there was uh, there was no keep alive requests actually used. But you you'd have to run this a, a handful of times to start getting an average of where we're at. So we're still within roughly the same amount of time it took the requests before. So let's some of the other switches we have here that we could actually show some different results. Um, I can toggle on and off different things but 
really the only thing we're going to see is the output switches so I'm gonna drop this down to a concurrency of 10 and just do a hundred for some of these output switches I'm gonna do Q and you knew, you notice the first thing that you don't see with Q is it got rid of the 10 showing how many requests were being processed at a time uh, I'm gonna do a, a D a dash D and you're gonna see that it's gonna get rid of that bottom list right down there so you don't see that bottom list of uh, how many pages were served in a given number of time I'm going to also now add a dash capital S to get rid of this section or reformat this section so we're gonna do that and you see that it got rid of the mean average and, and everything right there um, I can do verbosity whoops a verbosity of two gives us any warnings that might come by and you didn't see oh but you're not gonna see any there verbosity of three shows um, response codes so you got a log response code right there of 200 and then verbosity of 4 is going to also give you everything and the headers too so it's a lot of information you get there you got header information coming through uh, so there you go you can get some pretty cool stuff with verbosity we can actually change the output to something like HTML with the dash W and then let's go back to uh, whoop. Uh, N of 100, concurrency of 10. And you see that it starts to put everything in an HTML format. So that, that's pretty nice. You can, you can do some um, attributes on there. So if I wanted to do like a table attribute and set width equals 100 or 300 pixels, um, I can do that and then a Z for TD attribute and say style equals uh, text align oops, text align center like that and I want to close that so now when I run this you're going to see it's going to throw styling information I got a width in here and I got styling information in there um, I could probably have reversed that and I've done this to make it look a little just whoop. I think I could do that let me try that and make it just look a little better see I, I kinda like I prefer that myself uh, so there's HTML output you can get comma delimited let's go back to this original one over here we're going to do W but this time we're going to go I believe E is uh, generates a CSV file. Oh, I gotta specify the file name here, and we're going to do test.csv, and there we go. Test. What did I do here? Oh, text.csv is what. I and you see, it's just two columns here. One is the percentage served and time in milliseconds. So that's what you get there. Uh, we can change that to doing tab delimited file. Uh, tab delimited file, I don't know, TDF we'll call it. We still get the same output there, but now we can do... Did I call it text.tdf? Uh, you get a little more information. And this could be imported into GNU plot or look at it in a spreadsheet or anything else there that takes that kind of a uh, field and, and you can start plotting information if you wanted to. That is basically Apache benchmarking in a nutshell. Uh, I didn't really discuss interpreting the results because you could read that. It would make for a really poor video to try and do that. So I uh, hope that you enjoyed this episode and have a great day.